Uh, good evening to everyone. I will talk about of the slack and the snack and the staging and the management of this kind of pathology. The definition is the radiocalpar and intracalpar progressive deformity due to traumatic and degenerative pathology of the wrist involving the bones and the ligaments. The slack is an acronymous that is considered the scaphalonate advanced collapse. And this considered the dissociation of the scaphalonate that is not repairable. The, there is an unreducible scaphoid subluxation, and there is a chondropathy of the radiocarpal and sometimes of the midcarpal joint. This is some drawings to describe and show you what happens when the scaphoid ligament is damaged. The two bones, the scaphoid and lunate, uh, uh, have a dissociation, and uh, there is a different contact between the cartilage of the scaphoid and, 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 the, and the radius, and you have could have a chondropathy, a small chondropathy in the distal side of the styloid, giving you the stage one of this pathology. The stage two, and when the chondropathy is invo involved, involved all the facets of the scaphoid, radio scaphoid. And uh, when there is involved also the um, midcarpal joint, the capitate, this is the stage three. And when there is involving also the radiocarpal and uh, radio lunate joint, uh, we can say that at the stage four, this is a very, very, very rare condition. The snack deformity is the scaphoid advanced collapse. What happens when there is a, a, this kind of lesion? It's different uh, considering the lesion of the, the I mean the uh, non-union of the scaphoid. Uh, start the chondropathy in the radio scaphoid uh, fossa. And the facet, and then start in mid-carpal joint, but only in the radial side of the capitate. So the main part of the capitate remain normal. And this is stage two. Stage two. It became stage three when is involved all the part of the capitate involving also the lunate. And the stage four, very rare, but less than the uh, slack. Uh, the chondropathy involved the radial lunate joint in this stage four. What happened uh, in the radial in, in the lateral side? Normally, it happened that there is a disc deformity and the chondropathy involved the lunate and the capitate. The, I mean the radio lunate and the capitate lunate joint in the stage four. So to resume this for the, the, the two staging of the slack and the snack, we can consider stage one when the chondropathy is only in the tip of the radial styloid. When this chondropathy uh, involve all the uh, scaphoid facet, uh, the stage is the stage two. When they involve the midcarpal joint, the stage three, and they involve the radiocarpal midcarpal joint is the stage four. The snack deformity is quite similar, but it's not equal. Uh, the radio scaphoid chondropathy is the stage one, but it's different location according to the scaphoid union. And this is the same of also for the stage two, the scaphoid capitate chondropathy, the location of this chondropathy is different in according to the scaphoid union. Then when happen the involving of the capitate lunate joint, this is the stage three and the stage four when is involving the capital lunate and radio lunate uh, facet, and this is the stage four. Both have a pre clinical presentation similar. All the patients have a swelling, pain, swelling of the wrist in the radial side. And there is a reduction of the wrist motion and the grip strength. How we can do perform the, the diagnosis? By X-ray. Sometimes you perform the, the diagnosis by X-ray, but Frequently, you need the CT scan or MRI to consider perfectly the chondropathy in the several parts of the carpal bones, but it's not absolutely enough. For example, in the lateral side, you can see the stage two, but after the atroscopy, it becomes stage three because the chondropathy was involved also the capitate. And so I consider the arthroscopy a very, very uh, interesting and uh, concrete <coughs> method to perform the correct diagnosis of the staging of the slack and the snack wrist. Radiocarpal and mecarpal arthroscopy, you must be performed. 
is mandatory. A radiocarpal joint to evaluate all the surface uh, of the radiocarpal joint and mid-carpal arthroscopy for all the surface of the, of the mid-carpal joint. Sometimes happen when there is a wide opening that you can use not the four portals, but only one portal. The three, four portal, you can verify all the radiocarpal joint and passing through the scaphalonate uh, joint, you pass in the mid-carpal joint to verify everything. Five minutes, 10 minutes of working, and you can perform the perfect diagnosis, diagnosis and uh, evaluation of the two joint. So for me, the arthroscopy is mandatory to perform the correct diagnosis uh, and staging of the lesion, cartilage lesion in the slack and the snack. This, for example, is what you can see inside of the joint in the radio scaphoid, in the radio, in the radio, in the radial side of the radio scaphoid. And this is the scaphoid damage and the radio damage in the scaphoid facet. And this is, the, for example, the damage, different type of damage of the capital lunate, uh, the stage uh, three, correctly, capital lunate, small lesion of the cartilage and big lesion of the cartilage. And this is, for example, the damage of the uh, STT. This is mandatory to perform it, to verify perfectly from the mid carpal joint, the condition of the STT, because you have to consider that. And so when you perform the atroscopy, you per can perform the mapping of the articular cartilage damage of the slack and the snack. And this permitted to you to perform the correct surgical indication for the patient. This is the staging that you can uh, get from the arthroscopy, the stage one for slack and snack, the stage two for the slack, the stage three for slack and the stage four for slack, but it's very rare, this condition. We have a several options to treat this kind of lesion. We didn't treat, I, I, I will not treat the, the wrist arthrodesis and the wrist prosthesis. I want to treat um, several options that uh, for stage two and stage three. They are most frequent. For example, this is a radial stylorization and scaphoid treatment. You can perform a radio style resection and, and the scaphoid treatment when the cartilage is damaged in the tip of the radial styloid. And so the non-union of the scaphoid, even if there is the damage, the chondral damage of the scaphoid could be treated, removing the distal part of the uh, scaphoid, of the styloid, sorry, the styloid, the radial styloid. This is a very rare condition, but you have to consider that there is some possibility and the atroscopy can get you the possibility to verify that. This is another possibility. This is a distal pole resection, STP, you, or, or yes or not using the STP prosthesis. This was um, what happened when the arthritis, I mean the chondritis is located in the STT joint or in the scaphocapitate joint in the distal side. This was used by Solizime and he used the removing of the distal part of the scaphoid, fling the proximal part of the, of the, I mean the first row. And so the distal row can move without a pain, absolutely. If there is some instability or you have some doubt that there is some instability of the proximal row, you can use the STP interposition prosthesis that give you some part of stability of the proximal row. Another possibility is the proximal pole resection using the APSI interposition. Someone that didn't use the APSI, but Machulain suggested to use the APSI interposition. It's a pyrolytic carbon in the, uh, after the um, M remove, resect the, prox the, the, the proximal part of the scaphoid. And um, this could be also performed by arthroscopy. All of them, this kind of uh, surgery, sorry, is a very rare. And then you can use, suggested use in selected case, older patients, and there is only a temporary solution. It's not definite because the patient could have an increase of, of the pathology and can evolve and convert this kind of surgery in another type of surgery 
later. But the older patients have a less demanding for their hand and uh, uh, so can maintain a good function. Now we arrive in a very big topic of the of, of, of the of this kind of, of the treatment of this kind of pathology, uh, valid for the stage two and stage three. I will talk about of the scaphoid resection and carpal tenodesis. When is possible to perform the scaphoid resection and mid carpal tenodesis? When the two articular joint, capitated lunate, red lunate joint are completely normal. If there is some damage, chondral damage, this is not an indication. The chondral lesion should be only in the radius styloid or radius scaphoid or STT joint, but not in the other side. You remove the scaphoid. If you remove only the scaphoid, you have an instability, a collapse of the carpal, of the carpal bones. So, Carlo Rerosparau suggests, and I used and I published my experience some years ago, using the flesh to carpal dialis, flap tendons, passing from the volar side to the dorsal side, uh, close to the neck of the capitate and around, around the radio trequator uh, ligament. And this permitted to elevate and stabilize the carpal bones. The tendon is fixed dorsally to the capitate. In the lateral side, you can see perfectly what happened when you use this kind of technique, the tendon flap passing around the neck and dorsal to the, and around the, sorry, dorsal to the neck and around the radio trequetral ligament permitted to elevate and stabilize the um, carpal bones and fixing the dorsal side of the, of the capitate, maintain stable the capitate, the capitato lunate block of the bones. This, for example, is the first case performed by Andrea Zay several years ago in the snack deformity. And this was the function of these cases. This is the technique that I show completely to you. The dorsal approach, uh, the, sorry, the volar approach in which you make uh, the resection of the distal of the distal pole of the scaphoid, you take the uh, flap, the tendon flap from the carpal flexor carpi radialis, and then you go in the dorsal side by the straight incision, the retinacle was, was sexed, and uh, the tendon are um, opened, and then the um, the um, then the nerve was, uh, you perform the neurectomy of the posterior interosseal nerve. And then the dorsal flap, according to Berger Bischoff, is performed. The scaphoid is uh, uh, um, resected. And then you perform the reduction of the disease deformity, maintaining, using the um, key wire to maintain the position. And then the uh, anchor is positioned in the lateral radial side of the neck of the capitate. And this part the tendon is fixed because if you don't do that, the tendon slip in the mid carpal joint. So in this position, in a very strong manner, the tendon is fixed, then is passed around the radio, radio triquetral ligament, and then is fixed the tendon against uh, to itself and then discovered by the capsule and the patient is splinted for six weeks. The splint is maintained for six weeks according to the, to the technique proposed by, um, by Erspalaut and uh, Garcia and two months of rehabilitation and the patient start to have a very good range of motion and function and painless. With this were, were the, the two um, series compared by uh, Garcia Lies and by me. Garcia Lies proposed seven cases. I proposed 18 cases uh, with a follow-up of 25 months. I lost only four patients. Four patients were failure and then were converted in proximal rocarpectomy and in four bone fusion and the range of motion and the grip stance were more or less 70% of the normal side. Very good function for the, for the, for the, for the, for the patient. Um, comparing with the, clinical, with the clinical function, the X-ray was not so good because the radius, the X-ray 
um, showed the progressive joint degeneration of the carpal bones. There was a reduction of the carpal height, the lunar triquetral ulnar translation, and uh, there is, was uh, an increase of the disease deformity and the capitate, uh, the rad radio capital and the proximal progression of the, of the joint. Um, to me, to us, the indication, perfect indication is LAC2 is NEC2 in alternative to the proximal rocarpectomy. But the proximal rocarpectomy eliminated three bones. This preserved everything, but not interrupt the conversion in the proximal rocarpectomy or four bone fusion if some, something doesn't work. Another indication is the price of, the, the price of disease. My experience is uh, two cases of price of disease that works well. This is, a, a, is a one case um, after 10 years of the follow-up the patient have a very good motion, no pain. That's the one, it's nothing. But this was the X-ray at five years and at 10 years. Even if he has a, a, a bad X-ray, this patient stay well, doesn't want no other surgery. So the patient continue to maintain his wrist and work. Another possibility in this stage is, is the proximal rocarpectomy. The proximal rocarpectomy considered the removing of three bones and the capitate try to have a, a location in the lunate facet. The precondition is uh, that uh, the red lunate and capital lunate must be normal. I performed the proximal rocarpectomy by volar approach. I consider the volar approach better than the dorsal one. Why? I show later. Um, I use the a single way, single approach, the volar side, or double approach for the scaphoid one and for the other bones uh, in, in the ulnar side. Uh, normally, I use only one single approach. Um, the carpal, uh, the, car the, the capsule is resected. Is it, the incision is like this. Uh, and then I remove, firstly, the lunate, then the scaphoid, and then the triquetrum. And then I suture the capsule again. Then the tendon protects everything there. So the patient can start moving immediately, just the day after. This, for example, is the patient with the osteochondropathy and of the radioscaphoid, but everything was good. The radiocarpal joint and the carpal joint was good. And so I performed the resection. This, after 11 years, the function was dead. This is the comparison of my experience of the proximal rocarpectomy, sorry, with the dorsal uh, approach, prox volar and dorsal. More or less are the same, but the better function according to the motion. I use also the dorsal approach. The dorsal approach is traditional with the strike longitudinal incision. The retinaculum is sectioned. Uh, the capsule is open. All the bones, the three bones are removed and then the capsule was sutured again. This was the result. More or less is the same, but the patient started moving, not immediately, started moving after one month. I mean, they're moving the wrist because the retinaculum had to be protected in the healing. After the retinaculum, after one month, we assume that uh, the retinaculum is healing and then it can start to moving also the wrist. But at the, at the end, after 10 years, more or less the, the motion is, uh, are the same. Um, the arthroscopy is mandatory when you want to perform the proximal rocarpectomy by the volar approach. Why? Because the volar approach can, uh, per can permit it. All, only the proximal rocarpectomy, the dorsal approach can convert, can permit it to convert and they use different other solution like the forbone fusion, for example, by the dorsal approach, not for the, not for the volar approach. And so the arthroscopy in this particular condition, when you want to use the volar, the volar approach, must be done before because you, are, you need to be very sure that the, the mid carpal joint, the capitato lunate and red lunate joint, had to be normal. Another possibility is uh, to perform the um, proximal rocarpectomy when the chondritis is, is present. Uh, I mean, the capitate is not perfect. So you can use the capitate prosthesis. This is not my experience. I use the capsular flap. This is, for example, the case in which I use the flap to cover the lunate facet 
because I used the um, proximal flap, proximal basal flap. And uh, this was the patient, young patient with a very good range of motion after five years. The last possibility to treat the uh, carpal uh, instability uh, collapse, I mean the slack is neck tree, is the scaphoid resection and mid carpal arthrodesis. As you know, you perform the four bone fusion and the resection of the capitate. The aim of the surgery is to reduce the pain, increase the stability, preserve the motility of the radiocarpal joint, and maintain the carpal height. The scaphoidectomy and mid carpal arthrodesis have an indication specific. All the degenerative conditions, the slack and the snack tree. But the contraindication is uh, when there is a, a chondritis of the radionate joint. This is not permitted to perform it, the four bone fusion. This is wrong indication. The technique is dorsal incision. And then when you arrive in the carpal bones, you perform the resection of cartilage, all the bones, and then you fix it with the plate, with the key wire, what, what you want. My preferred technique is completely different. I use the double column technique of fixation using the herb screw in the um, reverse um, situation. I mean, passing from the, from the lunate to the capitate and from the triquetrum to the uh, M8. This is the results of one cases with a good range of motion. So there is some tricks that you have to use. The digital deformity must, must be uh, reduced in this condition using the joystick, using the key wire, like a joystick. You have also to correct not only the digital deformity, but only the ulnar translation of the lunar triquetral bones. And then you have to fix. When you did that, you have to fix the capitator lunate first. You can use the screw like this, but pay attention not to pass in the volar side. Because if you pass in the volar side, you have assigned this kind of lesion of the tendon. This happened to me to, twice in 200 cases of, the, um, of this kind of surgery. If you have a very rigid wrist, you cannot flex the wrist. I suggested you pass through the radius. There is happened nothing. The patient have the same results, very good stability, less motion, but very good stability and pain, painless wrist. The last possibility is the scaphoid and triquetral resection and the capitator lunate atrodesis. This was suggested by and published by James and Calandruccio in 2000. And um, I use that sometimes uh, when I need the bone to feel the, the bones uh, of the capitate. When there is a, there is a, 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 a loss of the, of the bones in, the, in, in, sorry, in the capitate. This is much, very, this is very easy. This is not necessary of the bone graft, uh, eliminated the whole lot impingement, but pay attention when you perform that and you eliminated the, the, all the ligament that stay in contact with the triquetrum. And so the patient has some pain in the ulnar side for some times, but they have a very good range of motion. Bain in 2006, published his experience and showed that the flexion extension increase of more or less of five to 10 degree and the radial deviation increase of, of 10 to 15 degrees. This is my experience that they published it some, uh, uh, some years ago to the Journal of the Surgery British in which I give this uh, uh, summary or algorithm of the treatment. This is to conclude my presentation. In the slack and snack deformity stage two, I suggested to use or the proximal rocarpectomy or the scaphoidectomy and mid-carpal tenodesis. In stage three, slack and snack deformity, I suggested to use the mid-carpal arthrodesis or in some very rare cases, the proximal rocarpectomy with interposition. And in very rare cases, the prote capitate prothesis that I don't use because I, I, I have not experience. It's like, it's next trick four, I suggested the wrist arthrodesis 
and in very rare cases, the radiocarpal prothesis. Thank you very much.